I'm with the Department for Missing People. I've been hunting a particular person for quite some time. I needed someone with an expansive knowledge of outsider literature, like you, to read through his published letters and articles and help us catch him. His twin is now somewhere in hiding. He has killed before. If we don't catch him now, we may never. I'm the one you're using. As I've said, we have the legal recourse. Couldn't this hunt just go on forever? Some things do. Some things last a long time. Are you going to bet more than a few bolts this time, robot? Zero zero one zero 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 one zero 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 one one. I'm going to bet a bit more than that. Yes. How about I'm all in? He's mad, crazy. Does I got to say? I've completely dedicated the last few years of my life with coming to this table and having made that commitment and deciding it once and for all. Now all of a sudden I can see you there. You all are right in front of me as clear as day. I never thought I'd see this clearly. I only ever saw you with brief glimpses in the dark through luminescent warm windows, in meetings, at your desk, or at my daughter's funeral. Now, now, you're ugly. Your breath reeks of death. I never had any childish fantasies of conquering you. Once I thought I could join you a long time ago. You're so beyond that. Around you are the bodies of my predecessors, other lives torn into your bedding. But you don't have to laugh at me in that way. Am I so pitiful that you have to smear it in my face like that? Yes, yes, you frighten me, you hurt me. I felt your claws ripping through my soul. Yes, I'm going to die someday, but before then I'm going to have to face you eyeball to eyeball. You swept into this town like a plague. I let you have everything. My time, my words, my voice, my love. I'm lost in this metropolis of fractured endless industry you created around a speck of truth I thought I could be a part of. I came here to tell you that I gave you Angelina in exchange for nothing. You're a cargo cult devoted to the relics of a people you don't understand, couldn't understand. I pity you destroyers. Mom taught preschool. She said the kids would colour with crayons, then put black crayon all over the top of the drawing. She speculated that the black crayon felt powerful to them and was fun to use. She <laughs> did not like sending kids home ugly black coloured scribbles, so she started collecting all the black crayons before having them do colouring. <laughs> you can see how Wolfenstein and Battlezone got turned into awful games with storylines no one enjoys. Game designers must... They, they, they feel they must tell a story once they get high colour and memory.
above the train tracks. I didn't say anything. I drink and eat marshmallows and coarse light in a bathtub left outside someone's house. Later, I would cry only when it was raining. Like camouflage. Like permission. Like I could have stopped him. Or her. Or me. Or the wind. Remove the plug behind you. This is the last one. It's time for you to move on. I went out to stay with my cousins. They picked me up from the airport in Texas. It was dark by the time I landed. It was a cheap flight and we were packed in so close and then suddenly I was in the cold night air being greeted by people I'd never met. But we acted like we knew each other with something more than Facebook posts and the birthday where I was too young to remember anything more than the green jelly we had. We drove back to the ranch, my uncle, me, and two cousins. It was so dark and I was trying to construct a world outside the window. The neighbor's house was burning. It was lighting up the sky like a second sunset. There was panic. We drove past and a few objects laid out on the grass and people stand clutching blankets. We didn't slow down and went back. We returned to a few beer cans my uncle had started before picking me up. We went to bed early. I was exhausted. My cousins came in a few minutes after the lights were out. They wanted to see the burnt house. Not wanting to disappoint them, I agreed to go. Sneaking out of the house wasn't too hard as my uncle was already unconscious in the living room. We arrived at the house where the house once was. It was only a few embers now. We could still feel the heat. We stood there for what felt like too long, not saying anything and starting to shiver as the night air cut through the Walmart polyester pajamas I had parked in my small bag. As we stood there, we started to see shapes that moved anonymously in the tree line not too far away. My cousin, I don't remember which, turned his flashlight on. The reflection of eight deer's eyes shone back that were resting in the ash. Perhaps on this freezing night with no mother, the young deers would have died from cold. Even in this tragedy that I couldn't quite understand, there was a great natural power to it that we all understood in that silent moment. Shivering, watching the deers sheltering in the warm remains of the house that belonged to the man that had shot their mother earlier that day. Okay, it's over. I don't know what happens next. I think they shut us off. I was hoping we were going to find somewhere new. Find somewhere where I wouldn't have to keep telling people the same story. He was the last human we had on ice. I don't know what happens next, what happens to us. I don't want to turn into ash. I don't want to help something I don't even understand live for another day. I don't want to die like them. For a dream that never came true. I don't want to die. Don't let me die. so naive I didn't understand why they were happening. I just wanted it to be over. It was a strained and fragile time to be a boy. There was a Jesuit down there with us. He was the first holy man I'd ever seen or heard of. I suppose I'm probably the only one here that's even heard of the man of God. Who told 
tell me a story about his day. All those years ago. About how people used to worship him when he was born on this day. Thousands of years ago. Of how on this day people would unite around that idea of innocence and generosity. I volunteered when I was much of a choice. A longer term arc freezing and 50% euthanasia rates, and my mother died, and most of what I knew to be life was over. That war was different to this one. I felt like it had signs that I could understand. It was probably just my youth, but I could sense good and evil at war. We would travel at close to light speed for a few weeks at a time. It wasn't so bad. We would engage on foot on distant colonies I would never return to again. Years passed and I remembered that Jesuit every year on that day. That war faded and others blossomed into existence. Treachery and resources and misunderstandings and how everything we would shape the life of. Somehow I survived all this. The right drop ship, the fast enough surge, and the jam of the army. My time dilations made me see a lot more than the years I should have. I've outgrown the time that makes sense to me, but still, once a year, at this time, on this day, suddenly it all makes sense. There's a change around this time, around Christmas time, when all of humanity reveals its true potential, and there's peace and love and generosity, a celebration of our true potential, and the tragedy is it ends. Well, maybe not this year. This year. This year, say, it isn't so. Maybe we don't go back to fear and greed. Say it isn't so. Say it isn't so. I'm so sorry, but it's going to be okay. We will be together. It's going to be okay. I love you, and they can't take that away. I wish we could be together, but there's only one way. Take out your heart and pass it to me. Let me take it with me so that we can be together. Pass the bars, pass this world into the infinity of together where we can steal away to a play no one else has a claim to. There's still something I don't understand. What's that? Why didn't you just kill me? Why did you make me read my poems? I recognized you the second you came in. We both did. I'm not killing anyone. How did you find me? 
Why did you? I, I, I don't understand. You wrote it that way, you told me. You told me why you left. Why you made a game where the only mechanic is taking a key and holding it throughout the entire game. <laughs> why did you make me, if I'm just a mix of my own model, sitting in a chair delivering dialogue you wrote to someone you don't know and probably don't give a fuck about? Tell me why you think your words have power. You made me a small, uncomplicated organism to a fictitious fucking twin that you abandoned in a game you should never have made. I'm the ultimate sound for a bad idea. Tell me how it ends. I thought you would kill me. Shh. Do you hear that? Do you hear? Shh. Shh. That is the world ending. Is the world ending? Did you hear it? Hey? Shh, no. Listen. Listen carefully. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <coughs> you're, you're here. Fantastic. Uh, this is the, um, well, the end of the world. Welcome. <laughs> I'm happy you came to it with me, if only for a few moments. I don't have much time, none of us do. A toast to you and to my friends that have been with me for so long. I became a game designer because of an 8 megabyte Magic Gate memory card for the Sony PlayStation 2. I became me because of 1.5 gigabytes of DNA, the way her spit tasted. I think I need to stop making beautiful things, just to watch them get washed away. I want to stop fearing, and hating, and chasing. I have dreams, but my hands tremble too much to let me work. Some things happen between time and space. I'm happy that you played my game. I, I, I'm sorry that I didn't put any things to kill in it, <laughs> or uh, coins to pick up. I'm sorry that I didn't let you save me or, or change my story. Why would I give you something I never had a way out? I don't want to be saved. When it's my story, you know, why don't you think it's something to fear? It's going to end soon. Before I go, I'll set all of you free. Thank you, Hamlet. Ophelia was saved from the river by the ducks. <laughs> even when you felt lost, even when there was rain, you went to them and they saved her. Imagine a different story. Imagine a city. A grey city. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it snows, but in, in one of the thousands of homes, there's a girl who has hundreds of plants in her small flat. And her life is green. People passing can sometimes see in and see the world within. There's a more beautiful and kind world up there. The girl falls in love with a boy who has a room of locusts. The boy leaves. The locusts stay. Her life is less green. <laughs> And uh, <coughs> he, uh, <coughs> oh, <shit. coughs> he, uh, <coughs> time to go.
time to go. But my castle's going to wash away. I can't just leave it. Listen to me. We can't save the castle. We made it, and we loved it, and we think it's important now, but as much as you might feel for the shape you made out of sand, you shouldn't. It's just sand. We're nothing like the castle you made. We're like the ocean. We're all like the ocean. We might be made of stuff like sand, but you can't ever believe you're just that. You, you are alive. You are the ocean. You are all the love in the universe. You are made of that, made of milk and love. The ocean's all you need to leave, all you can ever leave. It's where your mother and I found you, and where both of us will go one day. You too. All of us. Forever and ever. Okay, let's go home. Good. It's getting late. Throw the key if you brought it, player. Throw it in the ocean. You don't need to hold on to it. You can't let it hold on to you. It's called growing up. It's just like starting over.